1983. My parents meet in a Korean studies class at George Mason University. My mother, she signs up to learn more about her culture. My father, he signs up to earn an easy A. My father comes from a world with handlebars attached to his pillow so that he can hold on to his dreams at night. And when he sees my mother for the first time in that classroom, he reaches for his pillow because she's someone he could only dream of. He stands there with a smile so wide that it looks as if fish hooks are pulling up the corners of his mouth. After class, he offers to walk her to the bus stop and she replies, I have a car. <laughs> he continues to pursue her by trying to connect the dots, but he doesn't know what direction to go in first. All he can do is shout and hope that his echo reaches her. My mother is a dancer. She is trained in traditional Korean dance. My father is an athlete. He's a black belt in Taekwondo. 1987. My father moves to North Carolina, holding on to his dream of opening up his own Taekwondo school. He finds a room behind a shopping center. Surrounded by debris, it looks like an abstract painting. To an untrained eye, it appears to be a mess that a child had made. But as someone who understands and appreciates the work that goes into the process, he takes it. As construction is being done on his space, he sleeps in his teal-colored van that has paint chipping off the sides. He used to hide behind a dumpster. As layers of dust gathered on top of him, his skin turned gray. He used to crouch down so close to the ground that it looked as if he was one with the earth. He survived like this for a month. Living off of the $20 he had in his pocket, he used to make himself peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with bread from the discount bakery. Nights grew colder, and as a treat, he walked over to the Chinese takeout restaurant a few units over. He managed to pull together 75 cents to buy himself a single cup of hot and sour soup. Renovations on his tojang were finally complete, and it no longer felt like time was standing still. He gathered all the money from students who paid early enrollment fees and invites my mother to perform at his grand opening. He pays for her plane ticket and her hotel. My father picks her up from the airport, and as he sees her walking towards him, her footsteps match the beat of his heart. It's as if he finally connected the dots and created an outline of them together. Now that he had the foundation set in place for a picture, his next step was to color it in. 1989. My parents become husband and wife. My older brother is born, and four years later, I come along. As a Korean-American female growing up in North Carolina, I always knew that I was different. I remember the first time I hear the word harmony, I get it confused with harmony. <laughs> I remember other children making forts out of cardboard boxes, and I do too, except my boxes have ramen written on the sides. <laughs> I remember a girl coming up to me, twisting her blonde curls around her index finger, chewing her bubblicious gum and asking, um, so are you like from the good Korea or the bad one? <laughs> I remember chopsticks and konggi. I remember chegi chagi and norabang. I remember asking for band-aids, regardless of if there was a cut or a bruise or something that a band-aid can't touch, something that I feel beneath my skin. I would ask for a band-aid because even though it doesn't heal the wound, it covers it up. My mother is a dancer, teaching and performing traditional Korean dance. My father is an athlete. He's a ninth degree grandmaster. I am now a senior at George Mason, the same university where my parents met. I am the president of the Korean American Student Association secretary of a Taekwondo team, and youth outreach coordinator for Korean Americans for Hillary. 
I am the national director of political affairs for the College Democrats of America, the official youth arm of the Democratic National Committee. And I am proud to be a member of this executive board, to be a member of this party, and to be a member of this organization. I am proud to be a Korean American. But when this organization releases a diversity and inclusion plan that doesn't include Asian Americans, I begin to ask questions. Why are Asian Americans the fastest growing minority in this country, and yet we are left out of a plan whose name states diversity and inclusion? I'm not black, but I'm not white. I'm a minority, but I'm not minority enough. So where do I belong? My father never gave me a pillow with handlebars because he said I don't need it to hold on to my dreams. So I'm out here reaching for something that doesn't exist. All I can do is write to speak because it is my right to speak. We're out here playing a game that we don't necessarily know the rules to. None of us can change our past and we didn't choose our starting place. We may not understand it, but we're rolling the dice and seeing where we land. We are all puzzle pieces trying to find where we fit in. But in reality, our pieces are to a completely different puzzle that we have yet to solve. <laughs>